Today on Faces of Florence, Sandy Richardson. Horses and humans have always shared a unique bond, and Sandy explains that Morningstar Farms is a place where these special relationships can begin. Welcome. We're so glad you found us. Radio Free is a 24-hour Christian mixed radio station broadcasting right here out of Florence, South Carolina. So when you're driving around town, remember to tune it in to 92.5. And if you're outside of the Florence area, you can listen 24 hours a day at RadioFree.cc. Sandy Richardson, welcome to Radio Free and welcome to the Faces of Florence series. It's our new video series that we have here on Radio Free, and the sort of tagline is, uh, we're called to love our neighbors, hard to love your neighbor unless you know who they are. Right. Um, we're, you're here to for us to get to know you today, and I'm excited about that for a number of reasons. We've been corresponding a little bit back and forth, and so um, I'm really excited to kind of hear what's on your heart and what you do in, in greater detail. But, um, but, you know, just completely honestly, I, I love learning from people and getting to know people myself. So this is a treat for me too. So thank you for spending some time here today. And we're going to kind of jump out of the gate and talk a little bit about you. You are the owner operator of Morningstar Farms, um, which is in Timminsville, mm -hmm. um, right around the greater Florence area. Yes. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but let's start with a little bit of your story, whatever you are good to share. We, I would love to know kind of where you were born, how you were raised, that kind of thing. All right. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. This is scary, but fun at the same time. Okay. So we're just going to have some fun with it. Um, I grew up in Johnsonville. And as a child, I just absolutely fell in love with horses. I'm not sure who to blame for that. My parents are not sure who to blame for that. But I read anyway, that in the email that you sent yeah. me. You really have no clue. I mean, you didn't have a horse growing up. No. You just loved them. I know that um, my grandmother's next door neighbor had a kindergarten, and I remember that she had pony rides one day and uh, let us go over there. And I think that was probably what started it all. It was a little black and white pony. That's all uh, I remember. I don't even remember the pony's name. Um, but anyway, and I told you in that email that since then I've gone back and said Psalm 37, you know, God gives us the desires of our heart. Right. And I just pray that um, he put that desire in my heart that long, yeah, long ago. Yeah. Um, my parents saw the passion that I had and got us a horse uh, when I was in seventh or eighth grade. His name was Quincy, and he was like my best friend. And, you know, in those um, turbulent times of growing up and you're trying to figure out who you are and where you fit in, and your friends hurt your feelings. He was always my constant that I would go running back to. And he was my best friend. I would go spend days. I would go to the pasture he stayed in, ride my bicycle over there because it was on the other side of town, hop on him, ride him back over to my house, tie him up outside, and he and I would spend the afternoon together. Then I'd ride him back. Wow. And it was just such a, a wonderful time um, to have something like that, so special, um, that was mine, that relationship was mine, and he was a safe place for me to land when things were kind of not so fun. Um, and it wasn't anything terrible in my life. It was just normal growing up yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure. You know? That's pretty special. I don't. Yeah. A lot of people don't get that. Yeah. Not at that level, for sure, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, pets uh, of all kinds are helpful in that kind of situation, but horses are special, for sure. I've got some horse stuff in my family. My mom yeah. grew up on a ranch, and oh, so she's cool. a, a horse person as well. I did not have any of that in my upbringing, but just from talking to her, I know how that special that relationship mm -hmm. is. Um, so can you maybe unpack that a little bit? Like just for the mm. person who's listening, who's like, I mean, it's just a horse. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not. It, 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 can you explain a little bit more about what that relationship was I like? I can try to explain it. I don't know. Um, I'm not always good with words. Um, there's this big, huge animal, okay? And as, as a child, here I was a young thing. There was just something magical about um, 
and it was like a heart connection. Yeah. It's hard. It's it's probably the same way some people feel with their dogs, I guess. But it does seem to be more girl oriented with horses. I don't know what that's all about. Um, but you it think is the what size I see. has something to do with it because that that's Maybe, yeah, intimidating. Like they are huge and um and being able to control. Yeah, yeah. And not, I don't even want to say control, but for them to do what we ask them to do, yeah, right. and they're so big, there probably is is something to that. And they're they're beautiful. I was a, I'm an artist as well, which I don't get to do much of that because the farm keeps me pretty busy. But all I did was draw horses, you know, over and over again, and that was that was a lot of my pastime as well. All right, so you grew up with Quincy, mm-hmm. and your love, your lifelong love for horses was cemented, yep. um, and you moved through life to eventually get into a place where you opened up a horse farm? Yes, and the funny thing about that is back when I was young and I was the artist, I even drew out a plan for a horse farm. Really? Yeah, and I, I think I still have it today. I'd have to go up in the attic and look. Um, I had a barn over here, a big barn over here, a big barn over here, mares, stallions. We just swear the baby horses were going to be. It was so fun in my house. My <laughs> right, house was right, little, right. but the barns were big. Right. <laughs> so in order to do that, you know, I had to have a job that paid a lot of money because that stuff yeah. cost some money. Yeah. Well, life kind of happened, and I did graduate college, and I got a job, but it was not that fine, big paying job mm. that I needed to have to have my big farm. Um so when I got married, and we ended up with a small acreage, and I had my one horse. And I was like, Lord, I'm good with that. That's fine. You know, it, it's not the big dream that I had, but, you know, you never told me that I was going to get the big dream. This is this is good enough, and I was, I was content with that. Well, go forward a little while, like almost 20 years, my marriage fell apart, divorced and I'm sitting there and I had um I think we all have these pivotal moments in our lives mm-hmm. where we kind of have to lay everything down and my divorce was that in my life and I had been teaching lessons just as a sideline thing just for extra money and I had quit my regular job so here I was about to venture into singlehood, not knowing how I was going to support myself. And I can remember standing at the pump house of my house, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I could lose everything. You know, we go mm-hmm. down the the whole line of what's the worst thing that could happen. And when that happened, I said, you know, if I lost absolutely everything, God gives me what I need every time I need it, anytime I need it. So I'm going to have what I need. I'm not going to be penniless anyway. I have my family. Yeah. Okay. And um, so that was when it was very clear, the constants that were in my life, which were God first, my family, and then horses. And I just told the Lord then, I said, I will go wherever you tell me to go. I laid it all down. I said, I'll get rid of the horses. I'll get rid of everything. If you want me to go anywhere, just let me know. I said, but this is what I'm going to do based on what I just heard. I said, I'm going to pursue finding my own place and continuing with the horses. And that's when he led me to where I am now. Um, And that is a whole story within itself, Um, just his faithfulness in the finances, um, finding the property. The property ended up being property that belonged to some of my students, a family of my wow. students, and we worked out a really good deal. Not a coincidence, I'm guessing. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no. no. Um, so then it was raw land. I had to start started from scratch and had to get it cleared, and, um, and it is what it is today from that. Well, I want to get into the details of that here mm-hmm. in a minute, but one of the things you said in your email as well that just stuck with me, I've mean, just been hearing it in my head over and over again, is you stopped chasing your dream mm-hmm. and you just started following God. And what a, I mean, what a smack in the face. Like, I mean, 
we're all chasing a dream, right? And, mm -hmm. and it seems like we're mm -hmm. always chasing after things. And that they're not necessarily bad things, and they may even be part of God's plan. But that statement of just laying down the dream and just saying, okay, whatever you give me, God, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's just beautiful. So I just want to I just want to unpack that a little bit if we can, because that takes a lot of courage to do. It was really interesting because, yes, but when he gets you to that point, it mm. you know, doesn't even seem courageous anymore. It's just, you know, I don't know what else to do. Yeah, when you get to yeah. the end of yourself, I guess is what I'm saying. And the, the funny thing about it was I really forgot about that drawing of the really? farm that I had, and I forgot all of that. That just, and the first year I was there, I had my summer camp. Pastor Bob was there. The Sullivan uh -huh. had come to camp. Nice. Okay. And I remember Pastor Bob looking at me and he said, What made you start to, to even want to have anything like this, Sandy? And that's when the light bulb went off. And I said, Oh my gosh, this has been my dream. Mm hmm. All along. You forgot, but God did not forget. I know. Isn't that amazing? That's beautiful. That's he is so good. And um and it's good for me to recount it because yeah. over the years, you know, it can get kind of rough when you're on sure. your own trying to do something. So um it's good to recap. recap Absolutely. It. And I appreciate you sharing that with with our viewers as well, because I think we all have things like that in our life that we need to mm -hmm. keep going back to mm -hmm. and remembering how mm -hmm. faithful God really was, mm -hmm. how he just showed up. Well, let's talk about the mechanics of the farm at this point. What what happens out there, if you could break it down into sections, and then maybe take us through maybe what a lesson looks like. Okay. All right. I will try to do that. Sometimes, um, well, I can start out with, because this has just happened recently, there is nothing like a little girl that has this absolutely adorable love of horses, and they get to meet a horse for the first time. Mm -hmm. So they were like cool. you. They, they yeah, love yeah. horses without being around them? Absolutely. And then when they actually get yes, to stand in front yes. of one? Oh, it man, that's beautiful. It is so cool. And um, so I've had that the, probably within the last couple of weeks, so it's really neat that we're talking about it nice. because um, I can tell you about it a little fresher. Anyway, it's fresher in my mind. Um Grinning from ear to ear is what you get, and, and they learn to brush, so they get to actually touch the horse. And um, right now it's shedding season, so hair's flying oh, everywhere, yeah, yeah. too, so they end up taking some of my horses home with them on their <laughs> clothes. Um, but anyway, just the first lesson that they get, like I said, they learn how to be around the horse. If they're young, under like nine and a half, I don't usually allow them to lead, so we're, mm. we're getting the horse out for them and stuff. And we're teaching them how to be safe around the horse. All all of my students that are ten and under have to wear a helmet on their head okay. all the time around the horse. And so they they learn to brush. Then when we take them into the riding arena, we show them how to get on. Sometimes we have some that are scared. Okay, mm, I would imagine. And. I've, I'll have to tell you the story of the girl that is my right hand right now out at the farm. She is just absolutely wonderful. But she came to camp as like a six or seven year old, I guess. And the whole week of camp, she would climb up on the mountain block, knees knocking, mm. crocodile tears in her eyes, could not get on the horse. But she would climb those steps every day of camp till the very last day she got on. She has not gotten off of a horse since. <laughs> and um, like I said, she's now my right hand. But to watch these children overcome these fears um, and to gain confidence is really cool. So anyway, going back to the lesson, they, they learn how to get on, and then we teach them to start, stop, and steer. That's the first lesson. And, of course, before we get them, we usually put them on and walk them around so they can feel what it feels like to be on yeah. the horse. But we don't let them go just then. And we have to teach them how to stop. Stopping is good to know before you go, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it is. It's really cool. I've got this other group of girls right now that um, – I took out on a little trail ride because we can do that with some of my horses and just go. I usually have somebody with each horse, and we're leading them in the woods. And these girls are singing, we're going on a trail ride, everybody. <laughs> Come on, let's go on a trail. And it is just the cutest thing to watch them just bubbling over and enjoying the horses. 
you you said that you, you know you said some things that that jumped out to me that that being around horses helps these young girls overcome fears. Mm-hmm. And what I've gotten from you just in the correspondence is that you, yes, you love horses. Yes, this is a business, mm-hmm. but there's just something much bigger mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And so you are obviously helping people with what you do out there. Can you maybe unpack that a little bit for us? Like what, what fears does a little girl have? I mean, cause you were that little girl mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, and how do you think that that interaction helps? I know some of it's hard to describe, probably mystical, you know, but, um, but what a beautiful thing. It really, it, it is amazing. Um, and it is hard for me to describe. It's hard for me to put it into words. You know, I feel like I just show up. Yeah. I'm I'm just maybe a facilitator of things. Um, I'm not sure how to put it into words. I really don't. How, maybe how does that, um, how do they take that courage that they build there? Mm-hmm. Do you see them take that out into the rest of their lives? Well, I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope so. Um, sometimes they leave me and I don't see them again, right. so I don't know. Yeah. But I would like to think, you know, in my um, wanting to feel significant myself, yeah. I don't have children, so these are my kids while I have them. Um, I would like to think that I make a difference. Yeah. But actually it's not me that makes the difference. You know, it's, yes, I supply the horse, I supply the place, but it's the Lord that does whatever he does. And that might be why I can't put it into words because wow. I just, you know, he's indescribable. Right. There you go. He well, that's great. He's indescribable. And I try to allow him to do it. I don't want to be too self-conscious yeah. about what's going on. And that's hard when you have a business because you need to be able to say yeah. what it Break is. It down, Just like right, right yeah, now, yeah, I'd like to be yeah. able to say. Um, but if I get too caught up in that, then it kind of loses what it needs to be, which yeah. is about him. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that in the correspondence as well, that that the gospel mm-hmm. is at the core of what mm-hmm. you do. Mm-hmm. How does that, how does that uh, interact with with what you do on a daily basis out there? Well, first of all, every morning I try to turn the day over to him. I'm not always good at following through with what he tells me. And I will have to say there are times when it's freezing cold. You know, I take care of the horses too. So freezing cold, rain, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Um, I get really tired. Um, So sometimes I can be grumpy, (laughs) you know, but... That's all a part of being human, yeah. and I do try to turn it over to him and let him lead me through. And when I feel myself getting a little short, you know, I have to turn it back over to him. This is yours. It's not mine, you know, because I, I like to take the reins yeah. and um, try to be more in control than I need to be. And I put a lot of responsibility on my own shoulders that needs to be on his shoulders, Um and I'm notorious for that, actually. So, um, but we we do business biblically. Is you know the kids come out. We have a, a morning at the barn once a month. We have a devotional before we do all of that with the kids, and we do prayer requests. And I have had children that have come that said, "What's a prayer request?" Yeah. You know. Um, I've had people of different faiths come out, and of course, I had asked the parents, "Is it okay?" Because we're we're doing devotional, and they're fine with it. Um, otherwise, I think that my reputation is that anyway, and so they don't they come already knowing, yeah, hopefully, yeah. that that's what's going to happen. Um, I have camps in the summer, and we do the same thing at camp. So, and we we just try to mix it in when the Spirit tells us to mix it in. There you go. Oh, that's, so, that's so eloquent because I think people always want a formula, you know? They always want to break it down, do this, do this. Yeah. But you just got to go with the flow. God's going to change I, I it. I like you saying yeah. I was eloquent because I'm not <laughs> eloquent at all. So well, say to that my more. ears, it was eloquent. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's, that's fascinating, Sandy. And, well, 
for for someone who's listening um, who may not be of of a Christian faith, mm-hmm. um, I think what you said hits really at home, especially mm-hmm. in the the contentious atmosphere we've been in for, mm-hmm. for however mm-hmm. long now. But that that everyone's welcome, right? Yes. This isn't a club yes. for yes. That's one thing that um, I think I wrote in there. I should have probably looked at it even more than I did before I came, but the fact that I have three missions, basically. Um, One is, of course, teaching horseback riding and being safe around horses and horsemanship. And secondly is it's a place for people to feel like they belong. Mm -hmm. And I think that that just goes back to my childhood of wanting to feel that belonging, that sense of belonging. And so, you know, I've tried to create that... That's huge. Helping the Lord create that, I should say, yeah. I guess. Um, but selfishly, is some for me, too, yeah. you know, yeah. because I want that sense of belonging. Sure. I just create it you know, <laughs> so I can have it while I'm out there. Um, and then thirdly is to just integrate the gospel into every day when we can. Mm. All right. So someone's watching, I know. Who's like, I want in. I want to come out there. I want to do this. How do they get in touch with you? Maybe okay. break down kind of what are some of the options? Sure, sure. All right. So um, <laughs> there's always the option for volunteers. Okay, I good, will say. good. All right. Um, I can, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things that God's really been laying on me now. We'll talk I about need that. To, to well, hand over some of the responsibilities to people and to build a team. Um, so that is something, but let's get back to that. I'll tell you okay. the other first, gotcha. and then we'll talk about that. Um, so I teach riding lessons, or board horses, teach riding lessons. The lesson program um, I do in sessions, so they sign up for a session, and it's usually a once-a-week lesson. And I have a couple of different ways they can go. There's a little ready-to-ride where we have the horse ready for them, and they ride for like half an hour, and that's probably for the younger students. Okay. Beginners. Yeah, yeah. and um, then I do group lessons. Group lessons are probably the best. Um, and and I mainly did all this to break down the pricing. So that's the other thing that really um, bothers me is it's expensive. Yeah. It's, it's, I've, it got, I've got a lot of expense in what I do, and I don't want anybody to not be able to yeah. do this if they want to. And so um, I've had some people that have scholarship children nice. come through, which is really cool. Um, but, you know, everybody can't afford all of this. So that's that's a big deal. And the group lessons is a kind of a way in for that? That is a way in, and the little half an hour one is as well. Um, then there is morning at the barn, which is once a month, and that's an, another price thing where I've got, right now I had to change the way I do it, so I'm having smaller kids because of COVID, yeah. but um, anyway, we have a fun time, but we used to have a lot more fun because we could run around mm-hmm. the farm and play, but we can't do that right now. So anyway, um, we have two groups usually on the Saturday, and they spend an hour and a half actually on the horse oh, nice. riding, so that's fun. Um, then I have camps in the summertime, and that's a big, fun um, camp time. That's coming up. Some, that is coming mm. up, and it, it wears me out, but it is fun. We have a ball. <laughs> and I have to tell you, can I tell you a really cool story? Sure. This past year, as everybody knows, COVID hit. Mm-hmm. So I was already kind of going, oh, my gosh, how am I going to do camp? Right. So I had set up how I was going to do camp and do it differently. And I, I was like, this is awesome. This is going to work really good. Well, in May... I had to put one of my old horses down. Mm. She fell, and she fell into me when we were putting her down, and I broke six ribs. Oh. I was in the hospital for two two or three three nights. One, one night was actually in the ER, and then I had to go to a step-down unit for a couple of nights. Wow. So um, I was out of commission. I'm sure. It was camp time. Hmm. Ooh, what's Sandy going to do? COVID, camp time. Yeah. Sandy's what's, in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, Unfortunately, sometimes God has to get us out of the way completely mm. to work, to, for me to allow him to work. Let me put it that way. 
it was the most beautiful, awesome thing that happened. Um, friends stepped up, adult friends, and then the kids that are my helpers stepped in. They did camp. I sat back. I could come out and I could watch, and I'm like, Lord, these people are having fun. I have been hoarding all the jobs. <laughs> is that not just crazy? That is amazing. And, and I'm like, I'm really sorry that you had to do this to me to make me realize it, but I also know how hard-headed I am, so I understand why you did it. But that has precipitated the follow-up of the fact that I need to start finding team uh, members. Sharing the joy. Yes. You know? Yes. So I know that there are people out there that this sort of thing resonates with. You know, I have farm maintenance stuff that needs to happen. Fences need to be fixed. Right now it's springtime. I've got to get ready for camp. I've got to get soil samples for my pastures. I've got to put fertilizer out. I've got to get the fertilizer. i got to do this. i got to do that. There's all kinds of jobs that need to be done that I've been doing hoarding all this time, <laughs> okay? So I am perfectly willing to turn them, I'll say that, perfectly willing <laughs> to turn them over to somebody else. Clinched um, fist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I am at the point, you know, I'm not getting any younger either. So I've got to um, be a little smarter about how I do things and... I'm also learning that I need to be able to do the jobs that I need to do. Yeah, yeah. That only I can do. Right. I need to be available to do that, and I need to give the other stuff off to other people. Um, and once again, you know, like I said, it takes money to do all of that, and God has been faithful. I could tell you story after story after story of when things get tight, how it's just worked out. Um, seems like he has to take us to the end again of ourselves. Yep. You know, he waits to the last the minute to come in, doesn't mm -hmm. he? That's the lesson over and over again. Yeah, but he is good. And, and you know, I've told in talking to him, going, I know that it's not really about this place, Lord, that it's about my walk with you. It's not... Um, has nothing to do with what this farm does for other people even. It's just the faith walk and um, and it is a daily a daily walk. Okay, well let's land the plane with maybe some information about how people can get in touch okay. with you. Okay. Um, what's the best route if they want to get more information? Probably um, the Facebook page, Morning Star Farms LLC. Okay. That's one way to get hold of me. Um, the other way would be email, and that would be morningstarfarmsbusiness at gmail.com. All right. We'll add all that stuff yeah, along with the video. Yeah, that would be so. great. That would be great. And that's probably the best way um, to get up with me, and then we can kind of take it from there. Is there a is there a pricing list and that kind of thing, or they just get directly with you? If they'll get with me, um, I've... <laughs> Got to get my camp organized, yeah, so I got to yeah. do that right, you know, really soon, actually. Um, but, yeah, I, I usually get emails, addresses, and then send the information out. Gotcha. And then for people who are watching that are interested in helping to volunteer, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Is there a list of possible duties or things you need I'm to help with? I'm working on that. Okay. It's like Sandy's got to, to give them over. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, I was thinking of that earlier today even going, you know, the breakdown, I would really love to have like somebody that likes to organize events because I can do birthday things. You know, that would be an awesome thing to do. And I've mentioned just the regular farm work, yeah. farm maintenance stuff. If somebody just likes to be outside and driving a tractor would be a good thing to know. Yeah. To do. All right. Good, good. And it's kind of cool. I got good equipment. <laughs> um, so... And, and if they know horses, yeah. I would love, and even I had thought how cool it would be to have a group of, and I say women, it doesn't have to be women, sure. but I'm just thinking women because we love horses and we usually love kids too, not that guys don't, but um, to have some more adults that would be willing to at least hang out with the kids, 
I mean, we've got, I've got a little ministry that's um, started up out there called G3 that um, the younger kids, I start kids at um, six years old wow. for lessons, but the ones that are younger that might want to hang out at the barn, um, a friend of mine, Liz Moore, is heading up a little G3 thing where she gets the children out there and they learn how to brush the horse and she does a little devotional with them wow. and all of that. So, so you need some people to help kind of with that, just be around. I would love to have help with that. Wow. She would love to have help with yeah. that because that's going to be, I hope, a growing thing that we can get some more kids out. Well, Sandy, you, you did it. You stepped up to the plate. You were very courageous. Ah. And this was fantastic. No, for real, though, this what you're doing is, is special. And I, I know you know that on your heart level, but I think for the community. I think it's just obvious that you have a Thank heart you. for the community. And so we're praying for you. We're praying Thank for Morningstar you. Farms, and we're excited to see what the future is going to bring. Yes, I am, too. Thank, Thank you. you, Kevin. Thank you for spending time with Radio Free Today. Great.